Hello, and welcome to Stafoodle. I am, exhaustedly, Steph. Several of my doll friends and I got together for a creepy valentine collab. But Steph, I hear you say, it's late March. Valentine's Day was last month. Listen, we are not beholden to the corporate overlords who say that Valentine's Day is only on the 14th of February. Much like my stance on Halloween, Valentine's Day is a state of mind, and you can celebrate it whenever you want. And I want to celebrate it right now, so let's go! I want to make a lovesick vampire gal, and what better base could there be than a G3 Draculaura? I've really been looking forward to customizing her. I use my hair dryer to heat up the vinyl and remove the head. The G3 dolls in particular are very stubborn, and I had to use some tweezers to slip the last bit of vinyl off of the neck peg. I cut off her hair close to the scalp. I bundled it in sections so I could save it for another custom in the future. One of my goals this year is to actually use some of the salvaged hair that I have. After removing the rest of the hair, I remove the factory face with acetone. <laughs> I'll reroute her with this deep grayish purple nylon. And let's skip to the end where I'll add some all-purpose glue in through the neck opening because this reroute really tested my patience. <laughs> the paint flaked off, a problem I never used to have but I am having a lot now for some reason. The scalp split, ugh. But we got there in the end. And while the glue is drying, let's work on the clothes. I'll be adding some ribbon to the front of the blouse. I first iron on some hem tape to the ribbon pieces. I trim off the excess and then iron the ribbons onto the fabric. I think it adds a nice decorative element that mimics pin tucks. Now I can attach the back pieces of the bodice to the front at the shoulder seams. For the collar, I layer some black mesh over the lavender fabric and I'll hem it around the edge. Next, I'll sew the collar onto the bodice. The sleeve cuffs will also have a layer of the black mesh. I'll gather down the sleeves and attach the cuffs. Then I can fold the cuffs back and sew the edge to the seam allowance in the back. Now I can sew on the sleeves. And finally, I sew up the side seams, hem the raw edges, and add a snap closure. For the finishing touch, I'll sew on a bow at the neck, and the blouse is done! This is the center waistband piece for the skirt. I'll be adding some ribbon and buckles to the front. Then I'll sew on the other waistband pieces, good side to good side. Now I can hem the top of the waistband. I'll hem the bottom tier of the skirt. And for the top tier, I'll be sewing on this heart lace trim. I ended up shortening the length of the skirt pieces and later reduced the width as well to make the skirt less bulky. I gathered the tiers down and attached them to the waistband. And lastly, I sew at the back seam and add a couple of snaps. And it's done! I'll be reusing her shoes, but I'm painting them black. I paint the bat wing silver. Then I seal the paint in with matte Mod Podge. I found these earrings in my stock box, and I think they'll work nicely. I paint them black, then silver. Then I give them a wash with black paint to bring out the texture. And I seal them in with gloss varnish. I've masked off the hair and sprayed the head with a couple of layers of sealant. Now that I'm starting on the face up, I'd just like to say thank you to all of you for your patience while I took a short break. I'm still working through this current iteration of burnout and 
between the executive dysfunction and dissociation, it's been hard to even get this doll and video done. But I think, I hope it's getting better. And if you're out there having a rough time with your brain too, I'm sending all of the virtual hugs your way if you want them. If not, because you're not a touchy-feely person, that is fine. You get a thumbs up or finger guns instead. Your choice. I had a really clear idea in my head what facial expression I wanted to give her. Slightly squinted eyes with prominent lower eyelids, and a wide, slightly open mouth smile with her fangs showing just a little bit. It's always a challenge to add teeth to a sculpt with a closed mouth, and I've definitely struggled with it before, so it was a bit nerve-wracking, but I think I pulled it off this time.
After a final bit of sparkle and a couple more layers of sealant, I add some gloss varnish to her lips. I paint her nails black and gloss them as well. Now I can uncover her hair and reattach her head. I cut the neck pig down a bit to make it a little easier. Now I can cut and style her hair and... Wow, I knocked it out of the park, you guys. She looks so stinking cute, I'm so happy. <laughs> now we have our doll. Her blouse. Her skirt. Her original socks, because I think they work really well with this outfit. Her shoes. And her earrings. All that's left is to get her dressed, and she's done! I've decided to call her Plum, after her hair color. Her style is inspired by Jirai K, which is a sort of dark, girly Japanese street fashion. I'll leave a link to a couple of videos about Jirai K from Cyber Girl in the description if you'd like to learn more about it. It felt like an uphill climb the whole way, <laughs> but ultimately I'm very happy with how Plum turned out. She just came together so well. What do you think of Plum? And are you a holiday anarchist like me <laughs> and <laughs> think that you should be able to celebrate holidays whenever you want? <laughs> Let me know. Comment down below. Please go and check out all of the other dolls in this collab here on YouTube and over on Instagram from our host, Diamonza Craft, Insanely Creating, Lemon Kitten Creations, Telly Dollies, Fairykin, Stitchwick Creations, Lady Dynamite Creates, Starlight Dream Dolls, Doll Afterlife, and unbridled artistry. Everyone made such unique and beautiful dolls. This collab was so fun. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe if you'd like to see more from me, and click the bell icon and turn on all notifications so you'll know whenever I post a new video. All of my socials will be linked down below. I'm most active on Instagram. And if you really like what I do, and you want to buy me a coffee or help me afford more supplies, you can find a link to my Kofi tip jar in the video description, or you can click the super thanks button right below this video. And until next time, bye!